Okay, so welcome to this next video in the playlist on synaptic mechanisms. In this video, we're going to continue our study of clathrin-mediated endocytosis uh, by talking about the proteins dynamin and endophilin. Okay, and these are going to be involved in pinching off uh, the clathrin-coated pit. Okay, so dynamin, specifically dynamin 1, and endophilin. Okay, so, let's complete this story then. Right, so, the structure of this video, I'm going to remind you of how uh, the story has gone so far, because I would like this video to stand alone. I don't want it to be necessary that you have to have watched uh, the video on uh, the um, endocytic motifs, the video on the adapter proteins, and the video on the clathrin, uh, to be able to watch this video. So I will summarise what we have done in previous videos. Then what we'll talk about is we'll talk about uh, dynamin 1, then endophilin, and then we'll do a few experimental correlates. Okay, right. So, let's summarise where we've got to so far then. So, let's say here is the plasma membrane, and we have some target protein in the plasma membrane, uh, which is the protein we want to endocytose. So this is our target protein in the plasma membrane. Okay, so let me label it up. Target protein. Right. Now, in order to be endocytosed, the target protein will have visible in its cytoplasmic domain a certain sequence of amino acids known as the endocytic motif. Okay, so let's say it's here. Now, the endocytic motif is going to be uh, recognized by certain cytoplasmic proteins as meaning that well, as showing that this target protein needs to be endocytosed. So, what examples of endocytic motifs have we seen? Well, we've seen the sequence N, which is the single letter amino acid code for the amino acid asparagine, which is basically aspartic acid with, um, well, uh, the pri it's the primary amide of aspartic acid, so it's the aspartic acid bound to an ammonia, basically. So you take the hydroxyl group off, you take a hydrogen off ammonia, and then you bind the nitrogen to the carbon of the carboxylic acid group of aspartic acid. And then you get asparagine. Right, then, after asparagine in this uh, sequence of amino acids, you can have anything. So X is just a symbol that means anything here. You can have anything again. And then finally, you have to have Y. And Y does not just mean anything. This isn't maths. So, uh, Y is the single letter amino acid code for tyrosine. Okay, right. So, asparagine, anything, anything, tyrosine, like that, that is a very uh, popular endocytic motif. So, this is something that's going to be recognized by adapter proteins as meaning this protein needs to be endocytosed. Another popular uh, endocytic mo motif is tyrosine, followed by anything, followed by anything again, followed by uh, phi. So, again, it's a four-letter, uh, well, four-amino acid sequence. Now, what does phi stand for? Well, phi is not a single-letter amino acid code. Uh, so, instead, phi means a hydrophobic and bulky amino acid. Any amino acid can go there as long as it's hydrophobic and bulky. So, it need, it's R group needs to be hydrophobic and bulky. So what examples of amino acids do we know that are hydrophobic and bulky? Well, one is the phenylalanine amino acid, which has the single letter amino acid code F. So phenylalanine is an example of an amino acid which has a big and hydrophobic R group. Another example is isoleucine, which has single letter amino acid code I. So, isoleucine is another example. Okay, both of these have big hydrophobic uh, R groups. Okay, so both of these um, sequences of four amino acids, they function as endocytic motifs. So, if your target protein has one of these visible in its cytoplasmic domain, then it will bind to adapter proteins. So, let's now see these adapter proteins. Okay, so... 
um, adapter proteins then. They form these complexes, and the adapter protein complex that is going to be important in endocytosing target proteins from the plasma membrane is going to be the adapter protein complex 2, also known as the AP2 complex, or the adapter protein complex 2. Right, so how do we get this adapter protein complex 2 to the plasma membrane? How do we target it to the plasma membrane? Well, basically, it binds to another protein which is in the plasma membrane, which also needs to be uh, re-endocytosed, which is synaptotagmin. So let me show this. So here is our synaptotagmin protein. Specifically, it binds to the C2B region of synaptotagmin, this blob that I've drawn here. Okay, now you might be asking, well, what on earth is synaptotagmin doing in the plasma membrane? Synaptotagmin is supposed to be this protein that's in synaptic vesicles, and of course, we're specifically talking here about synaptotagmin of the first or second type. So there are 19 different isoforms of synaptotagmin. Some of them don't even bind calcium. So uh, the ones which are involved majorly in synaptic uh, neurotransmission are uh, synaptotagmin 1 and synaptotagmin 2. Okay, so if we draw an axon terminal here, okay, so here's the axon, here's the axon terminal, uh, then if we have a synaptic vesicle docked at the plasma membrane here, we know that synaptotagmin will be in the membrane of this synaptic vesicle. <laughs> there we go. So what's it doing in the plasma membrane? Well, when this synaptic vesicle fuses with the presynaptic membrane here, then what's going to happen? Well, here's our synaptic vesicle now fused with the plasma membrane. The synaptotagmin that was in the synaptic vesicle is now going to be in the plasma membrane. So here it is in the plasma membrane now. So that is how you can get synaptotagmin in the plasma membrane of a cell. And we started off looking um, at how we were going to re-endocytose membrane once it had been put into the axon, uh, well, into the plasma membrane of an axon terminal. So synaptotagmin is one slash two is certainly going to be in the plasma membrane of axon terminals. Okay, and this domain where you've got the C2A and the C2B domain, that is going to be on the cytoplasmic side of the plasma membrane. So this is the cytoplasmic side, so the cytoplasm is here, and this over here is the extracellular fluid. So this is very nice. Right, so the adapter protein complex 2 is going to bind to the C2B domain of the synaptotagmin 1 slash 2 protein. And this is how it's going to recruit itself to the plasma membrane. So let me now draw for you uh, a cartoon of the adapter protein complex 2. So it's a protein complex. So it's made up of a huge number of different proteins. And the proteins it's made up of are known as adaptin proteins. So here is our adapter protein complex 2. And it's got this sort of Mickey Mouse structure, and these sort of appendages that stick off up here, here and here, they are actually referred to as ears. Okay, and then you have two proteins sticking in the middle here. Okay, so you have four adaptin proteins overall making this structure up. So you have the alpha adaptin protein, the beta adaptin protein, and then these two in the middle. This first one is known as the mu adaptin protein, and this second one over here is the sigma adaptin protein. So let me colour these things in. So, okay, in purple here, this is the beta adaptin protein that forms part of this adapter protein complex 2. Okay, so there is the beta adaptin protein. Uh, in turquoise here, this is the mu adaptin protein, which again forms part of this adapter protein complex 2. In orange here, this is the sigma adaptin protein. And finally, in red, this is the alpha subunit of the adapter protein complex 2, which is again an adaptin protein. So it's the alpha adaptin protein. Okay, and together they make up this adapter protein complex 2. 
Now, the adapter protein complex 2 binds to the C2B domain of the synaptotagmin 1 slash 2, which is in the plasma membrane. And this is how uh, the adapter protein complex 2 gets targeted to the plasma membrane. Now, um, there is a lipid, a normal component of the phospholipid bilayer, known as PIP2. So I'll show this here. Here is PIP2, phosphatidylinositol 4,5-bisphosphate. And PIP2 appears to be extremely important for enhancing this interaction between the C2B and the adapter protein complex 2. Indeed, if you uh, remove all uh, PIP2, phosphatidylinositol 4,5-bisphosphate, from the uh, plasma membrane, then uh, this interaction occurs much less. So this is not essential for the interaction, but it seems to promote it. It seems to make it a gr higher affinity uh, interaction. Okay, so this is how we target our adapter protein complex 2 to the plasma membrane. Once it's there, and once we have our target protein here, with this endocytic um, motif here, what's going to happen is the uh, adapter protein complex 2 is also going to bind to this endocytic motif uh, on the cytoplasmic domain of our um, target protein here. So this in red is the endocytic motif, and we have now got this um, uh, adapter protein complex 2 bound to the endocytic motif of our target protein there. And by the way, one last little fact about the adapter protein complex 2 is that this portion here, i.e. all the bits apart from the ears, that's referred to as the core domain of the um, adapter protein complex 2. So this is the core domain. And this is the portion that is binding to the C2B domain of synaptotagmin 1 slash 2 and also to the endocytic motif on our target protein. These two portions here, which I told you are called the ears or the appendages of the alpha and beta adapting proteins, so these are the appendages, they are going to be involved in uh, recruiting uh, clathrin, basically, to this site and in actually triggering the endocytosis. So these are the appendages, which are also called the ears. Okay, and we'll continue this discussion in the next video.